Before beginning any circuit analysis, you have to define the variables you'll be using, which are usually voltages and currents. Circuit elements are mathematically defined by the relationship between voltage and current at their terminals. For passive circuit elements, this relationship is called the passive sign convention, and that's the subject of this video. There are two kinds of elements in any electrical circuit, passive and active. Passive circuit elements don't supply energy to the circuit from outside the circuit. They can store, release, and dissipate energy, but they can't create it. These types of circuit elements always have a functional relationship between their voltage and current. On the other hand, active circuit elements supply energy to the circuit from outside the circuit. A battery, for example, uses a chemical reaction to create electrical power. The energy comes from a source that's external to the circuit. Mathematical models of active elements may not have a functional relationship between voltage and current. For example, if we assume that a 12-volt battery provides 12 volts to a circuit, regardless of the current provided to the circuit, the current and voltage are independent and you don't necessarily need to follow the passive sign convention. Anytime you have a mathematical model which relates voltage and current for a circuit element, you need to assign an appropriate sign convention. If the voltage and current aren't related, you're free to choose sign conventions for voltage and current independently. When we analyze electrical circuits, we represent the circuit elements by their voltage current relationships or IV characteristics. The voltage current relations provide a mathematical function that relates the voltage difference between an element's terminals and the current through the element. This functional relationship relies on a sign convention between the reference voltage polarity and the reference current direction. It's important to remember that this reference sign convention doesn't dictate actual voltage polarities and current directions. The general idea is analogous to application of Newton's second law. Newton's law says that the sum of the forces applied to a mass is equal to the mass times the acceleration. In order for this equation to work, we have to assign the force and mass variables so that the assumed direction of positive acceleration is the same as the assumed direction of positive force, as shown on this diagram. This diagram doesn't dictate the actual directions of force and acceleration. The force can be to the left, in which case it will have a negative value, and application of Newton's law will result in a negative value for acceleration so that the mass accelerates to the left. This equation doesn't care what sign the force has. It just requires that the acceleration will be in the same direction as the force. In order to analyze an electrical circuit, we create a mathematical model of the circuit. The model lets us predict the behavior of the circuit before we build it. The passive sign convention helps us define the variables in our mathematical equations. If we don't get our sign convention correct, the model won't work and the implemented circuit won't behave the way we want it to. The passive sign convention is really important, but fairly simple. When defining voltages and currents in the circuit, we define them so that the positive reference current direction is such that the current enters the positive reference voltage terminal. It's as simple as that. Positive current enters the positive voltage terminal. The easiest way to do this is to arbitrarily choose either a voltage polarity or a current direction for each component. This is done arbitrarily and the choice you make for any element doesn't have to be based on any other element. However, once you've chosen either the voltage polarity or the current direction for an element, that choice dictates the choice of the sign convention for the other parameter. Current direction dictates the voltage polarity for that component and vice versa. Another way to state the passive sign convention is that only the voltage polarity relative to the current direction is important. Individually, neither one of them matters. Also, keep in mind that the sign convention for each component is independent. This is a perfectly legitimate choice of voltage and current variables for this element. Notice that positive current enters the positive voltage terminal. However, this isn't the only possibility. This choice of voltage and current is also fine. Positive current is still entering the positive voltage terminal. 
we're not specifying actual voltage polarities and current directions. These are just reference directions that we'll use when we mathematically model the circuit. The actual directions will be indicated by the signs of the values that we calculate. If the value is determined to be negative, it just means that we chose the opposite reference direction. But as long as we know the reference directions, we can correctly interpret the signs of the values. Now let's look at an example of defining voltages and currents relative to the passive sign convention. Here's our circuit. The passive elements are represented by these gray boxes. We also have two active circuit components, this 5 volt voltage source and this 0.5 amp current source. What we want to do is to assign voltage and current variables to each of the passive elements and make sure that the passive sign convention is followed. We don't need to assign variables or values for the two sources. For this element, I'm going to claim that this is the positive voltage terminal. Once I've made this be the positive voltage terminal, I have to assign positive current as entering that voltage terminal. For my next element, I'm going to claim that this is my positive current direction. Once I've defined this as positive current direction, this becomes my voltage polarity. For this one, I'm going to claim that this is the positive voltage polarity. Once I make that definition, this becomes positive current direction. Positive current has to enter the positive voltage terminal. Finally, over here, I'm going to make this my positive voltage polarity, in which case positive current is downward toward the positive terminal. This choice isn't unique. I can change any or all of these. For example, I can decide that this is the positive current in this element then that changes my voltage polarity so that positive current enters the positive voltage terminal. Either one of these is fine. So the reference directions can be assigned independently for each component, but they have to be consistent for any individual component. Remember, the passive sign convention is a simple concept. There's absolutely no reason to make it more complicated than it really is. First, you pick either a voltage polarity or a current direction for every circuit element, remembering that the elements are independent and the decision is arbitrary. The parameter you've chosen to define dictates the sign on the other parameter. Positive current enters the positive voltage terminal. The reason that you can do this is because you're only defining references that will allow you to interpret the sign of the actual values. Once you've done your analysis or made your measurements, it could turn out that one or the other or both of the values are negative. That just means you've picked the opposite reference direction. Defining variables and their sign conventions is an essential first step to any circuit analysis. If you don't do that before starting to analyze your circuit, chances are your analysis will be wrong or you won't know how to interpret your results. The next video presents specific voltage current relationships for a few common circuit elements.